The Inuit were fishers and hunters, primarily of sea mammals such as whales, walruses, and seals, and they consumed a high-protein, high-fat diet. In fact, the Inuit consumed an average of 75% of their daily energy intake from fat. An anthropologist in the 1920s studied a group of Inuits and focused on the fact that their diet had no adverse effects on either their health or his own. These findings were supported by a later study in 1972, and it was noted that although the Inuit consumed massive amounts of fatty ocean fish, which are packed with omega-3s, none of them tested showed signs of heart disease. In addition, there was significantly less evidence of joint disease and skin disease than found in Western countries. Further research led to the conclusion that omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, present in the diet offer significant health benefits. DHA and EPA have been shown to be beneficial to heart health and human development. They tend to reduce blood sugar, prevent blood clot formation, thereby reducing the risk of stroke, and protect against irregular heartbeats. Inflammation and autoimmune diseases. It's believed that omega-3 fats play an important role in the prevention and treatment of coronary artery disease, high blood pressure, arthritis, other inflammatory and autoimmune disorders, and cancer. Brain health. Omega-3 fats play an important role in maintaining mental health and are crucial for brain function. Omega-3 fatty acids may provide benefits such as expanding learning and memory capacities. Early evidence suggests that the consumption of omega-3 fats is essential for synaptic transmission in the brain. Lipids are important fats that serve different roles in the human body. A common misconception is that fat is simply fattening. Our ability to store excess caloric energy as fat for future usage allowed us to continue as a species during these times of famine. Lipids are a family of organic compounds that are mostly insoluble in water. Composed of fats and oils, lipids are molecules that yield high energy and have a chemical composition mainly of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Lipids perform three primary biological functions within the body. They serve as structural components of cell membranes, they function as energy storehouses, and they function as important signaling molecules. The three main types of lipids are triglycerides, phospholipids, and sterols. Triglycerides make up more than 95% of lipids in the diet, and they're commonly found in fried foods, vegetable oil, butter, whole milk, cheese, cream cheese, and some meats. Naturally occurring triglycerides are found in many foods, including avocados, olives, corn, and nuts. We commonly call the triglycerides in our foods fats and oils. Fats are lipids that are solid at room temperature, whereas oils are liquid. As with most fats, triglycerides don't dissolve in water. Phospholipids make up only about 2% of dietary lipids. They're water-soluble and are found in both plants and animals. Phospholipids are crucial for building the protective barrier or the membrane around your body's cells. In fact, phospholipids are synthesized in the body to form cell and organelle membranes. In blood and body fluids, phospholipids form structures in which fat is enclosed and transported throughout the bloodstream. Sterols are the least common type of lipid. Cholesterol is perhaps the best well-known sterol. Though cholesterol has a notorious reputation, the body gets only a small amount of its cholesterol through food. The body produces most of it. Cholesterol is an important component of the cell membrane and is required for the synthesis of sex hormones, vitamin D, and bile salts. The functions of lipids in the body include storing energy, regulating and signaling, insulating and protecting, and aiding digestion and increasing bioavailability. The excess energy from the food we eat is digested and incorporated into adipose tissue or fatty tissue. Most of the energy required by the human body is provided by carbohydrates and lipids. While glycogen provides a ready source of energy, lipids primarily function as an energy reserve. As you may recall, glycogen is quite bulky with heavy water content. Thus, the body cannot store too much for long. Alternatively, fats are packed together tightly without water and store far greater amounts of energy in a reduced space.
A fat gram is densely concentrated with energy. It contains more than double the amount of energy than a gram of carbohydrate, 9 kilograms per gram as compared to 4 kilograms per gram for a carbohydrate. Energy is needed to power the muscles for all the physical work and play an average person or child engages in. For instance, the stored energy in muscles propels an athlete down the track, spurs a dancer's legs to showcase the latest fancy steps, and keeps all the moving parts of the body functioning smoothly. Unlike other body cells that can store fat in limited supplies, fat cells are specialized for fat storage and are able to expand almost indefinitely in size. An overabundance of adipose tissue can result in undue stress on the body and can be detrimental to your health. A serious impact of excess fat is the accumulation of too much cholesterol in the arterial wall, which can thicken the walls of the arteries and lead to cardiovascular disease. Thus, while some body fat is critical to our survival and good health, in large quantities it can be a deterrent to maintaining good health. Triglycerides control the body's internal climate by maintaining constant temperature. Triglycerides also help the body produce and regulate hormones. For example, adipose tissue secretes the hormone leptin, which regulates appetite. In the reproductive system, fatty acids are required for proper reproductive health. Women who lack proper amounts may stop menstruating and become infertile. Omega-3 and omega-6 essential fatty acids help regulate cholesterol and blood clotting and control inflammation in the joints, tissues, and bloodstream. Fats also play important functional roles in sustaining nerve impulse transmission, memory storage, and tissue structure. More specifically in the brain, lipids are focal to brain activity in structure and in function. They help form nerve cell membranes, insulate neurons, and facilitate the signaling of electrical impulses throughout the brain. 30% of body weight is comprised of fat tissue. Some of this is made up of visceral fat or adipose tissue surrounding delicate organs. Vital organs such as the heart, kidneys, and liver are protected by visceral fat. The composition of the brain is outstandingly 60% fat demonstrating the major structural role that fat serves within the body. You may be familiar with subcutaneous fat. That's the fat underneath the skin. This blanket layer of tissue insulates the body from extreme temperatures and helps keep the internal climate under control. It pads our hands and buttocks and prevents friction as these areas frequently come in contact with hard surfaces. It also gives the body the extra padding required when engaging in physically demanding activities such as ice or roller skating, horseback riding, or snowboarding. The dietary fats in the foods we eat break down in our digestive systems and begin the transport of precious micronutrients. By carrying fat-soluble nutrients through the digestive process, intestinal absorption is improved. This improved absorption is also known as increased bioavailability. Vitamins A, D, E, and K, the fat-soluble vitamins, are mainly found in foods containing fat. Some fat-soluble vitamins, such as vitamin A, are also found in naturally fat-free foods such as green leafy vegetables, carrots, and broccoli. Fats also increase bioavailability of compounds known as phytochemicals, which are plant constituents such as lycopene, found in tomatoes, and beta-carotene, found in carrots. Phytochemicals are believed to promote health and well-being. As a result, eating tomatoes with olive oil or salad dressing will facilitate lycopene absorption. Other essential nutrients, such as essential fatty acids, are constituents of the fats themselves and serve as building blocks of a cell. The role of lipids in food include high energy source, smell and taste, and satiation. Fat-rich foods naturally have a high caloric density. Foods that are high in fat contain more calories than foods high in protein or carbohydrates. High-fat foods are a convenient source of energy. For example, one gram of fat or oil provides nine kilocalories of energy compared with four found in one gram of carbohydrate or protein. Depending on the level of physical activity and on nutritional needs, fat requirements vary greatly from person to person. Fat contains dissolved compounds that contribute to mouth-watering aromas and flavors. Fat also adds texture to food. Baked foods are supple and moist. Frying foods locks in flavor and lessens cooking time. How long does it take you to recall the smell of your favorite food cooking? 
What would a meal be without that savory aroma to delight your senses and heighten your preparedness for eating a meal? Fat contributes to satiety, or the sensation of fullness. When fatty foods are swallowed, the body responds by enabling the processes controlling digestion to retard the movement of food along the digestive tract, thus promoting an overall sense of fullness. Oftentimes, before the feeling of fullness arrives, people overindulge in fat-rich foods, finding the delectable taste irresistible. Indeed, the very things that make fat-rich foods attractive also make them a hindrance to maintaining a healthful diet. While fats provide delicious smells, tastes, and textures to our foods, they also provide numerous calories. To allow your body to experience the satiety effect of the fat before you overindulge, try savoring rich foods. Eat slowly. This will allow you to both fully enjoy the experience and be sated with a smaller portion. Remember to take your time. Drink water in between bites or eat a lower fat food before and after a high fat food. The lower fat foods will provide bulk, but fewer calories. Lipids are unique organic compounds, each serving key roles in performing specific functions within the body. Triglycerides are the main form of lipid found in the body and in the diet. Fatty acids and glycerol are the building blocks of triglycerides. Glycerol is a thick, smooth, syrupy compound that is often used in the food industry. To form a triglyceride, a glycerol molecule is joined by three fatty acid chains. Fatty acids determine if the compound is solid or liquid at room temperature. Fatty acids consist of a carboxylic acid group on one end of the carbon chain and a methyl group on the other end. Fatty acids can differ from one another in two important ways, carbon chain length and degree of saturation. Foods have fatty acids with chain links between 4 and 24 carbons, and most of them contain an even number of carbon atoms. When the carbon chain length is shorter, the melting point of the fatty acid becomes lower, and the fatty acid becomes more liquid. Fatty acid chains are held together by carbon atoms that attach to each other and to hydrogen atoms. The term saturation refers to whether or not a fatty acid chain is filled or saturated to capacity with hydrogen atoms. If each available carbon bond holds a hydrogen atom, we call this a saturated fatty acid chain. All carbon atoms in such a fatty acid chain are bonded with single bonds. Sometimes the chain has a place where hydrogen atoms are missing. This is referred to as the point of unsaturation. When one or more bonds between carbon atoms are a double bond, that fatty acid is called an unsaturated fatty acid, as it has one or more points of unsaturation. Any fatty acid that has only one double bond is a monounsaturated fatty acid, an example of which is olive oil. 75% of its fat is monounsaturated. A polyunsaturated fatty acid is a fatty acid with two or more double bonds or two or more points of unsaturation. Soybean oil contains high amounts of polyunsaturated fatty acids. Foods that have a high percentage of saturated fatty acids tend to be solid at room temperature. Examples of these are fats found in chocolate and meat. Foods rich in unsaturated fatty acids, such as olive oil, tend to be liquid at room temperature. Flaxseed oil is rich in alpha-linolenic acid, which is an unsaturated fatty acid and becomes a thin liquid at room temperature. The introduction of a carbon double bond in a carbon chain, as in an unsaturated fatty acid, can result in different structures for the same fatty acid composition. When the hydrogen atoms are bonded to the same side of the carbon chain, it's called a cis fatty acid. Because the hydrogen atoms are on the same side, the carbon chain has a bent structure. Naturally occurring fatty acids usually have a cis configuration. In a trans fatty acid, the hydrogen atoms are attached on opposite sides of the carbon chain. Unlike cis fatty acids, most trans fatty acids are not found naturally in foods, but are a result of a process called hydrogenation. In other words, they're man-made. Hydrogenation is the process of adding hydrogen to the carbon double bonds, thus making the fatty acid saturated or less unsaturated, as in the case of partial hydrogenation. 
This is how vegetable oils are converted into semi-solid fats for use in the manufacturing process. Fatty acids are vital for the normal operation of all body systems. The body is capable of synthesizing most of the fatty acids it needs from food. These fatty acids are known as non-essential fatty acids. However, there are some fatty acids that the body can't synthesize, and these are called essential fatty acids. It's important to note that non-essential fatty acids doesn't mean they're unimportant. The classification is based solely on the ability of the body to synthesize the fatty acid. Essential fatty acids must be obtained from food. They fall into two categories, omega-3 and omega-6. The 3 and 6 refer to the position of the first carbon double bond, and the omega refers to the methyl end of the chain. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are precursors to important compounds called eicosanoids. These are powerful hormones that control many other hormones and important body functions, such as the central nervous system and the immune system. Eicosanoids derived from omega-6 fatty acids are known to increase blood pressure, immune response, and inflammation. In contrast, those derived from omega-3 fatty acids are known to have heart-healthy effects. DHA is an omega-3 essential fatty acid shown to play important roles in synaptic transmission in the brain during fetal development. Some excellent sources of omega-3 and omega-6 essential fatty acids are fish, flaxseed oil, hemp, walnuts, and leafy vegetables. Phospholipids, like triglycerides, have a glycerol backbone. But unlike triglycerides, phospholipids are diglycerides, two fatty acid molecules attached to the glycerol backbone, while their third fatty acid chain has a phosphate group coupled with a nitrogen-containing group. This unique structure makes phospholipids water-soluble. Phospholipids are what we call amphiphilic. The fatty acid sides are hydrophobic, meaning they dislike water because they're nonpolar, and the phosphate group is hydrophilic, meaning it likes water because it's polar. In the body, phospholipids form a double layer in cell membranes, thus effectively protecting the inside of the cell from the outside environment, while at the same time allowing for transport of fat and water through the membrane. Phospholipids are also ideal emulsifiers that can keep oil and water mixed. Emulsions are mixtures of two liquids that don't mix. Lecithin, found in egg yolk, honey, and mustard, is a popular food emulsifier. Sterols have a very different structure from triglycerides and phospholipids. Most of them don't contain any fatty acids, but rather multi-ring structures. They're complex molecules that contain interlinking rings of carbon atoms with side chains of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen attached. Cholesterol is the best known sterol because of its role in heart disease. It forms a large part of the plaque that narrows the arteries in atherosclerosis. In stark contrast, cholesterol does have specific beneficial functions to perform in the body. Like phospholipids, cholesterol is present in all body cells as it is an important substance in cell membrane structure. About 25% of cholesterol in the body is localized in brain tissue. Cholesterol is used in the body to make a number of important things, including vitamin D, glucocorticoids, and the sex hormones progesterone, testosterone, and estrogens. Notably, the sterols found in plants resemble cholesterol in structure. However, plant sterols inhibit cholesterol absorption in the human body, which can contribute to lower cholesterol levels. Lipids are large molecules and generally aren't water-soluble. Like carbohydrates and protein, lipids are broken into small components for absorption. The first step in the digestion of triglycerides and phospholipids begins in the mouth as lipids encounter saliva. Next, the physical action of chewing, coupled with the action of emulsifiers, enables the digestive system enzymes to do their tasks. The enzyme lingual lipase, along with a small amount of phospholipid as an emulsifier, initiates the process of digestion. These actions cause the fats to become more accessible to the digestive enzymes. As a result, the fats become tiny droplets and separate from the watery components. In the stomach, gastric lipase starts to break down triglycerides into diglycerides and fatty acids. 
Within two to four hours after eating a meal, roughly 30% of the triglycerides are converted to diglycerides and fatty acids. The stomach's churning and contractions help to disperse the fat molecules, while the diglycerides derived in this process act as further emulsifiers. However, even amid all this activity, very little fat digestion occurs in the stomach. As stomach contents enter the small intestine, the digestive system sets out to manage a small hurdle, namely to combine the separated fats with its own watery fluids. The solution to this hurdle is bile. Bile contains bile salts, lecithin, and substances derived from cholesterol, so it acts as an emulsifier. It attracts and holds on to fat while it's simultaneously attracted to and held onto by water. Emulsification increases the surface area of lipids over a thousand fold, making them more accessible to the digestive enzymes. As pancreatic lipase enters the small intestine, it breaks down the fats into free fatty acids and monoglycerides. Yet again, another hurdle presents itself. How will the fats pass through the watery layer of mucus that coats the absorptive lining of the digestive tract? As before, the answer is bile. Bile salts envelop the fatty acids and monoglycerides to form micelles. Micelles have a fatty acid core with a water-soluble exterior. This allows efficient transportation to the intestinal microvillus. Here, the fat components are released and disseminated into the cells of the digestive tract lining. Just as lipids require special handling in the digestive tract to move within a water-based environment, they require similar handling to travel into the bloodstream. Inside the intestinal cells, the monoglycerides and fatty acids reassemble themselves into triglycerides. Triglycerides, cholesterol, and phospholipids form lipoproteins when joined with a protein carrier. Lipoproteins have an inner core that's primarily made up of triglycerides and cholesterol esters. A cholesterol ester is a cholesterol linked to a fatty acid. The outer envelope is made of phospholipids interspersed with proteins and cholesterol. Together they form a chylomicron, which is a large lipoprotein that now enters the lymphatic system and will soon be released into the bloodstream via the jugular vein in the neck. Chylomicrons transport food fats perfectly through the body's water-based environment to specific destinations such as the liver and other body tissues. Cholesterols are poorly absorbed when compared to phospholipids and triglycerides. Cholesterol absorption is aided by an increase in dietary fat components and it's hindered by high fiber content. If fats aren't absorbed properly, as is seen in some medical conditions, a person's stool will contain high amounts of fat. If fat malabsorption persists, the condition is known as steorrhea. Steorrhea can result from diseases that affect absorption, such as Crohn's disease and cystic fibrosis. The body transforms carbohydrates into glycogen that is in turn stored in the muscles for energy. When the muscles reach their capacity for glycogen storage, the excess is returned to the liver, where it's converted into triglycerides and then stored as fat. In a similar manner, much of the triglycerides the body receives from food is transported to fat storehouses within the body if not used for producing energy. The chylomicrons are responsible for shuttling the triglycerides to various locations such as the muscles, breasts, external layers under the skin, and internal fat layers of the abdomen, thighs, and buttocks. Capillary walls contain an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase that dismantles the triglycerides in the lipoproteins into fatty acids and glycerol, thus enabling these to enter into the adipose tissues. Once inside the adipose tissues, the fatty acids and glycerol are reassembled into triglycerides and stored for later use. Muscle cells may also take up the fatty acids and use them for muscular work and generating energy. When a person's energy requirements exceed the amount of available fuel presented from a recent meal or extended physical activity has exhausted glycogen energy reserves, fat reserves are retrieved for energy utilization. You may have heard of LDL and HDL with respect to heart health. These abbreviations refer to low-density lipoprotein and high-density lipoprotein. 
Lipoproteins are characterized by size, density, and composition. As the size of the lipoprotein increases, the density increases. This means that HDL is smaller than LDL. After about 10 hours of circulating through the body, chylomicrons gradually release their triglycerides until all that is left of their composition is cholesterol-rich remnants. These remnants are used as raw materials by the liver to formulate specific lipoproteins. VLDLs are very low density lipoproteins. They're made in the liver from remnants of chylomicrons and transport triglycerides from the liver to various tissues in the body. IDLs are intermediate density lipoproteins and they transport a variety of fats and cholesterol in the bloodstream and are a little under half triglyceride in composition. LDLs. These are low density lipoproteins and they're commonly known as the bad cholesterol. It's imperative that we understand their function in the body so as to make healthy dietary and lifestyle choices. LDLs carry cholesterol and other lipids from the liver to the tissues throughout the body. LDLs are comprised of very small amounts of triglycerides and house over 50% cholesterol and cholesterol esters. As the LDLs deliver cholesterol and other lipids to the cells, each cell's surface has receptor systems specifically designed to bind with LDLs. HDLs, high density lipoproteins are responsible for carrying cholesterol out of the bloodstream and into the liver, where it's either reused or removed from the body with bile. HDLs have a very large protein composition coupled with low cholesterol content, 20 to 30%, compared to the other lipoproteins. Hence, these high density lipoproteins are commonly called good cholesterol. LDL and HDL composition. LDL is approximately 25% protein and 75% cholesterol and other fats. LDL is bigger but lighter and richer in cholesterol than HDL. HDL is 50% protein and 50% cholesterol and other fats. It's smaller, more dense, and richer in protein. LDL-HDL function. LDLs carry cholesterol into cells for normal usage, but LDLs can also deposit cholesterol into the walls of vessels, which can lead to harmful disease. HDLs scavenge excess cholesterol from the cells, tissues, and blood vessels and deliver these back to the liver, where these are either reused or excreted. LDLs carry lipids that are pro-inflammatory and they may contribute to heart disease. HDLs transport lipids that are anti-inflammatory and may reduce the occurrence of heart disease. High LDL values warn of an increased health risk for heart disease, while high HDL values indicate a reduced risk for heart disease. LDLs become more dangerous when oxidized. Oxidation is defined as the loss of electrons between two substances via a chemical reaction. If an LDL oxidation occurs, the oxidized LDL is left unstable. Oxidized LDL can speed up the process of plaque formation in the arteries. When looking at individual lipid profiles, a low amount of LDL and a high amount of HDL prevents excess buildup of cholesterol in the arteries and wards off potential health hazards. The danger of consuming foods rich in cholesterol and saturated in trans fats cannot be overemphasized. Regular testing can provide the foreknowledge necessary to take action to help prevent any life-threatening events. Current guidelines recommend testing for anyone over age 20. If there is family history of high cholesterol, your healthcare provider may suggest a test sooner than this. Testing calls for a blood sample to be drawn after 9 to 12 hours of fasting for an accurate reading. Desirable is under 200 milligrams per deciliter. Borderline high is 200 to 239, and high risk is 240 or greater. According to the NIH, the following desired values are used to measure an overall lipid profile. LDL should be less than 160 milligrams. If you have heart disease or diabetes, less than 100 is recommended. HDL should be greater than 40 to 60 milligrams. Triglycerides should be 10 to 150, and VLDL should be 2 to 38. In short, elevated LDL lipid profiles indicate an increased risk of heart attack. 
while elevated HDL blood lipid profiles indicate a reduced risk of heart attack. Fat calories should be limited to 20 to 35 percent of total calories, with most fats coming from polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, such as those found in fish, nuts, and vegetable oils. Consume fewer than 10 percent of calories from saturated fats. Some studies suggest that lowering the saturated fat content to less than 7 percent can further reduce the risk of heart disease. Keep the consumption of trans fats, any food label that reads hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oil, to a minimum, less than 1% of calories. Think lean and low fat when selecting meat, poultry, milk, and milk products. Population-based studies of American diets have shown that intake of saturated fat is more excessive than intake of trans fat and cholesterol. Saturated fat is a prominent source of fat for most people as it is so easily found in animal fats, tropical oils such as coconut and palm oil, and full fat dairy products. To aim for healthier dietary choices, the American Heart Association recommends choosing lean meats and vegetable alternatives, choosing dairy products with low fat content, and minimizing the intake of trans fats. They also recommend consuming fish, especially oily fish, at least twice per week. Monounsaturated fat. This type of fat is found in plant oils. Common sources are nuts like almonds, cashews, pecans, peanuts, and walnuts, and nut products, avocados, extra virgin olive oil, sesame oil, high oleic safflower oil, sunflower oil, and canola oil. Polyunsaturated fat. This type of fat is found mainly in plant-based foods, oils, and fish. Common sources are nuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, pecans, almonds, and peanuts, soybean oil, corn oil, safflower oil, flaxseed oil, canola oil, and fish. Trout, herring, and salmon are some examples. Saturated fat. This fat is found in animal products, dairy products, palm and coconut oils, and cocoa butter. Limit these products to less than 10% of your overall dietary fat consumption. Trans fatty acids. Stick margarines, fast foods, commercial baked goods, and some snack foods contain trans fats. Limit your consumption of these products to keep trans fats to less than 1% of your fat consumption. Good sources of omega-3 fatty acids are canola oil, flaxseed oil, soybean oil, olive oil, nuts, seeds, whole grains, legumes, and green leafy vegetables. DHA and EPA. Good sources of these are cod liver oil and fish such as tuna, herring, mackerel, salmon, and trout. Good sources of omega-6 fatty acids are eggs, poultry, most vegetable oils, wheat germ oil, whole grains, baked goods, and cereals that contain these fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids are present abundantly in nuts and seeds such as flax seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, and watermelon seeds. While omega-6 fatty acids are essential, they can be harmful if they're out of balance with omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-6 fats are required only in small quantities. Researchers believe that when omega-6 fats are out of balance with omega-3 fats in the diet, they diminish the effects of omega-3 fats and their benefits. This imbalance may elevate the risk for allergies, arthritis, asthma, coronary heart disease, diabetes, many types of cancer, autoimmunity, and neurodegenerative diseases, all of which are believed to originate from some form of inflammation in the body. The recommendations for the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids vary from 5 to 1 to 10 to 1. Hydrogenation is the good gone bad. When lipids are subjected to hydrogenation, the molecular structure of the fat is changed. Hydrogenation is the process of adding hydrogen to unsaturated fatty acid chains so that the hydrogen atoms are connected to the points of saturation and results in a more saturated fatty acid. Liquid oils that once contained more unsaturated fatty acids become semi-solid or solid upon complete hydrogenation and behave like saturated fats. Oils initially contain polyunsaturated fatty acids. 
When the process of hydrogenation is not complete, a partially hydrogenated oil is produced. Manufacturers favor hydrogenation as a way to ensure a longer shelf life. Partially hydrogenated vegetable oils are used in the fast food and processed food industries because they impart the desired texture and crispness to baked and fried goods. Partially hydrogenated vegetable oils are more resistant to breakdown from extremely hot cooking temperatures. Because hydrogenated oils have a high smoking point, they're very well suited for frying. In addition, processed vegetable oils are cheaper than fats obtained from animal sources, making them a popular choice for the food industry. Trans fatty acids occur in small amounts in nature, mostly in dairy products. However, the trans fats that are used by the food industry are produced from the hydrogenation process. Trans fats are a result of the partial hydrogenation of unsaturated fatty acids, which cause them to have a trans configuration rather than the naturally occurring cis configuration. When selecting your foods, steer clear of anything that says hydrogenated, fractionally hydrogenated, or partially hydrogenated, and read food labels in the following categories carefully. Cookies, crackers, cakes, muffins, pie crusts, pizza dough, and breads, stick margarines, and vegetable shortening. Premixed cake mixes, pancake mixes, and drink mixes. Fried foods and hard taco shells. Snack foods such as chips, candy, and frozen dinners. Because heart disease, cancer, and stroke are the three leading causes of death in the United States, it's critical to address dietary and lifestyle choices that will ultimately decrease risk factors for these diseases. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the following risk factors are controllable. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, cigarette smoking, diabetes, poor diet, physical inactivity, being overweight, and obesity. In light of that, we present the following informational tips to help you define, evaluate, and implement healthy dietary choices to last a lifetime. The amount and the type of fat that composes a person's dietary profile will have a profound effect upon the way fat and cholesterol is metabolized in the body. If left unchecked, improper dietary fat consumption can lead down a path to severe health problems. An increased level of lipids, triglycerides, and cholesterol in the blood is called hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia is a prelude to disease. According to the AHA, cardiovascular disease encompasses a variety of problems, many of which are related to the process of atherosclerosis. Over time, the arteries thicken and harden with plaque buildup, causing restricted or at times low or no blood flow to selected areas of the body. A heart attack happens when blood flow to a section of the heart is cut off due to a blood clot. Many have survived heart attacks and go on to return to their lives and enjoy many more years of life on this earth. However, dietary and lifestyle changes must be implemented to prevent further attacks. The most common type of stroke in the United States, ischemic stroke, occurs when a blood vessel in the brain or leading to the brain becomes blocked, again, usually from a blood clot. If part of the brain suffers lack of blood flow and or oxygen for three minutes or longer, brain cells will start to die. Congestive heart failure. Sometimes referred to as heart failure, this condition indicates that the heart is not pumping blood as well as it should. The heart is still working, but it's not meeting the body's demand for blood and oxygen. If left unchecked, it can progress further to levels of malfunction. Arrhythmia is an abnormal rhythm of the heart. The heart may beat above 100 beats per minute, known as tachycardia, or below 60 beats per minute, known as bradycardia, or the beats are not regular. The heart may not be able to pump enough volume of blood to meet the body's needs. Heart valve problems. Stenosis is a condition wherein the heart valves become compromised in their ability to open wide enough to allow proper blood flow. When the heart valves don't close tightly and blood begins to leak between chambers, this is called regurgitation. When the valves bulge or prolapse back into the upper chamber, this condition is called mitral valve prolapse. Obesity is defined as the excessive accumulation of body fat. According to the U.S. Surgeon General, obesity is the fastest growing cause of death in America. 
The HHS reports that the number of adolescents who are overweight has tripled since 1980, and the prevalence of the disease among younger children has doubled. Obesity has been linked to increased risks of developing diabetes and heart disease. Reducing the type and amount of carbohydrates and sugar consumed daily is critical. Limiting the intake of saturated fats and trans fats, increasing physical activity, and eating fewer calories all are equally important in fighting obesity. On your next trip to the grocery store, prepare yourself to read all food labels carefully and to seriously consider everything that goes into your shopping cart. Perhaps create a shopping list and divide your list into columns for best, better, good, least desirable, and infrequent foods. Becoming aware of the need to limit your total fat intake will facilitate your ability to make better choices. Remember, the food choices you make today will benefit you tomorrow and into the years to come. As you refine your sense of dietary fat, here are some key points to bear in mind. Shopping for groceries. Appearance. Stay away from trans fats. Choose unsaturated fats. Limit the intake of saturated fat. And low fat does not equal healthy. A better fat diet will successfully support weight loss. With the obesity rates in the United States more than tripling since 1980, it's interesting to note that this figure has presented itself and increased at a time when low fat advertising runs rampant throughout the food supply. While cutting least desirable fat calories are vital to weight loss, remember that better fats are filling and just a handful of nuts can curb an appetite to prevent overeating. Consume omega-3 fats each day. For optimal health and disease prevention, include a moderate serving of fish, walnuts, ground flax seeds, flaxseed oil, or soybean oil in your diet every day. Limit cholesterol-rich foods. The following foods should be limited from the diet in order to reduce blood cholesterol. Chicken liver, beef, pork, fast food, pastries, butter, cheese, and ice cream. How much saturated fat is too much? Your goal is to keep your intake of saturated fat to no more than 10% of your total dietary calories on a daily basis. Thus, it's important to learn to reduce the intake of foods high in saturated fat. High fat foods can be consumed, but they must fall within the overall goal for a person's fat allowance for the day. Limit the use of saturated fats in home preparation of meals. Instead of butter, try spreads made from unsaturated oil such as canola or olive oils and the use of cooking sprays. Couple this with the use of herbs and spices to add flavor. Avoid using high fat meat gravies, cheese, and cream sauces. Limit adding extras to foods such as butter on a baked potato. Grill, bake, stir fry, roast, or bake your foods. Never fry in solid fat such as butter or shortening. Marinate foods to be grilled in fruit juices and herbs. Instead of relying upon commercial salad dressings, learn to make your own top quality dressing from cold pressed olive oil, flaxseed oil, or sesame oil. Make sure the fat is flavorful. Adding flavor to food is what makes the eating experience enjoyable. Why not choose unsaturated fats and oils that have strong flavors? In this way, you'll add good flavor to your meals, but use less fat in the process. Some examples are sesame oil, peanut oil, and peanut butter. Replace less flavorful cheeses with small amounts of strongly flavored cheeses, such as Romano, Parmesan, and Asiago.